on the eve of the 50th anniversary of the death of one of Ireland's greatest Republicans, Sean Lamass, the man responsible for persuading my grandfather into politics in 1926 when he visited my home place in Rosnakil in Donegal. It's with well a great sense of pride that I take this opportunity to formally propose this joint private members' business motion, which I co-sponsor with Senator Aaron McGree and a colleague, a motion which outlines the importance of the work of the Shared Island Initiative, uh, which Antisha Michael Martin has championed. It also was about reaffirming the commitments of the Good Friday Agreement and the opportunities that has afforded us within this island. My grandfather fought in the War of Independence, and I have always considered myself and Fianna Fáil as a Republican Party. Anyone familiar with Neil T. Denny will also know the connection I have to Northern Ireland and the hardship and struggle that, is, that our island went through. A struggle that seemed endless at the time, but did end with a Good Friday Agreement. We now have political representation for all communities and governance that is shared between communities. A difficult decision, but one that is important and may, be seemed, uh, and may have seemed impossible. However, progress cannot stop here. The question now is, how quickly do we respond to these setbacks and evolve with the changing times on the basis of the agreement? I, for one, deplore the actions of one Deputy Matt Carthy TD in the last few weeks, when he commemorated a former IRA man who inflicted death and harm uh, to our society uh, for no gain. This country has had our divisions caused by British occupation for many decades. The war is over. Contrary to popular belief, our day has actually come. It came to this island on the 10th day of April in 1998, when this agreement was signed and peace was won. The, the, the above-mentioned deputy's actions fly in the face of republicanism and are more akin to playing the, to those responsible for the murder of Paul Quinn. Actions like this need to be called out, and they have no cause or gain to any community on the island of Ireland. The Good Friday Agreement was a victory after a long and violent conflict. This motion seeks to reaffirm our commitment to, the, to this historic document and has put an end to decades of violence. Overall, we have had peace in Northern Ireland. We have a society that strive for harmony, and this motion underlines in the true spirit of the Good Friday Agreement and its signatories. We too need now to strive for that very same respect, equality and partnership. Equality and partnership are crucial to any society, but they are most certainly important in Northern Ireland. And I fear these two aspects may be breaking down in recent years. As a member of the Committee on the Implementation of the Good Friday Agreement in this House, I am acutely aware of the damage done to trust and partnership between communities by Brexit and its effects on Northern Ireland and its people. We must continue to repair the damage done and to strive for effective and pragmatic solutions to deep and complex issues and divisions that exist. At the Good Friday Agreement Committee, we have had representation from members on all sides. But we have also seen attempts at playing partition politics through a forum that is dedicated to partnership, to respect and to equality. I am someone that holds my Republican credentials in high esteem. I want to see the creation of the space for the people of this island to learn how to get along and learn to live among each other in harmony. As someone who represents an area that has geographically, historically have been geographically cut off from the rest of the island, I implore members of this House to keep in mind that our communities are intertwined there is no them versus us, there is simply us. I am hearing the rhetoric of running a border poll as apparently the, the, the Good Friday Agreement gives the constitutional grounds for it to happen. I hear the constant rhetoric that a citizens, the constant rhetoric that a citizens' assembly be put in place as soon as. This rhetoric needs to stop. If Irish uni, unity was that easily won, it would have been formed part of the Good Friday Agreement. It wasn't part of it. Our problems are much more complex than that, and some don't want to admit that. What the Good Friday Agreement does allow is for the opportunity to plan for unity for all the people of this island, the opportunity to bring the people of this island as one people of many identities. If the politicians and political leaders in the run-up to the Good Friday Agreement had the ability and foresight to create this space, are we really saying that we as an island nation do not have the foresight, do not have the vision and leadership to finish the job? Unionist leaders allowed that space in the Good Friday Agreement Committee, or in the Good Friday Agreement that they signed up to. Are we really blaming them when we try to bring about a border poll or a citizens assembly by coercion without the minority at the table? We have been handed a great opportunity to bring an end to decades of division and mistrust. 
We cannot afford to muck this one up. We owe it to future generations. The parties to the Good Friday Agreement, including the two governments and the US administration, have shown us that a path was achievable. I believe we all now need to ask ourselves and all parties, who are our leaders going to be? What can we do to restore that trust that has been damaged by the taking down of Stormont for three years, damaged by Brexit and the approach being taken by the British Government? What can we do to restore trust so that the North-South institutions can be fully implemented? And for me, this is key. If we achieve this much, and if we really grasp the opportunity given, we will be on a road to a much more lasting peace and prosperity for all our island. I have every confidence in the US administration uh, that would be only too willing to begin negotiations on a shared future. Using that very same model that worked so well for the Good Friday Agreement, I believe that if and when we do get to the space, great things can be achieved collectively for our shared future. We have seen setbacks to cross-border relations through the breakdown of communications through the cross-border institutions that the Good Friday Agreement created. We have seen setbacks in our communities last April when anger and frustration culminated in unrest. We have also seen setbacks in relations uh, between the two government parties in Northern Ireland who seem to be interested in antagonising each other at times more uh, than they want to work together. All these setbacks are exactly why we have brought this motion to this House. We need reminding of the opportunity afforded to us, the opportunity to decide our own destiny. The Shared Island Dialogue is a real effort to bring trust and cohesion within communities on the island. The Shared Island Fund is there to kickstart that cross-border uh, interagency approach to tackling the lack of unbalanced regional development and turn to let the people of, Ireland know, or people of Northern Ireland know that this Republic, uh, Republic of Ireland government cares by implementing infrastructural cross-border projects that Northern Ireland and, by extension, the border region has been starred off for too long. Peace has been hard won and peace is not guaranteed. Not guaranteed. We must evolve and work together to ensure that peace lasts. There is no room for partisan divisions when it comes to peace. We either have peace or we do not. Deep divisions in countries need leadership that is willing to cooperate, and we call for that here today. We need to break down barriers, not build them back up again. As members of this House and as members of the Executive of Northern Ireland, Sinn Féin has an absolute pivotal role in the future of Northern Ireland with the decisions they, they make now. The peace process, and it is, a, it is a process, cannot continue without their support and consent. Sinn Féin must be a part of the solution, not a cause of the problems. Anti-establishment views must, may, may generate clicks and headlines, but they can only go far go so far when we are an establishing party in Northern Ireland. Overall, Sinn Féin are part of the large majority for which, um, or that wish for a united Ireland when the prospect of one is feasible and realistic. It is simply a fact uh, that we have to mind uh, the minority on our island as well. Uh, as time is running out, um, uh, I believe pieces in our grasp uh, in relation just uh, to the two amendments. Um, we, we accepted the uh, and we accept the Sinn Féin amendment. Um, I, I spoke to the to the second amendment, uh, but in the interest of moving forward, we won't oppose it on the day. Go here. Colonel, thank you for sharing time with Senator Aaron McGee.